Hello, and welcome back to USAGT. This is a two-part series discussing the problems and allegations alleged by several gymnasts from what is considered one of the top developmental gyms in the country, Texas Dreams. Texas Dreams is historically and notoriously known for injuring their athletes on an almost continuous basis. This is what we will be discussing in this segment. On top of that, several gymnasts have come out and accused Chris Burdett of racist comments towards them, accused Kim Zemeskel of cutting a black gymnast's braids, toxic culture, and emotional abuse. We will be discussing that in the next segment. So be sure to subscribe and stay tuned because we will be releasing that later this week. A little bit about the gym. Texas Dreams is a gym owned and run by Olympian and world all-around champion Kim Zemeskel and her husband, Chris Burdett. They have churned out many U.S. national team athletes, like Olympic alternate Reagan Smith, current junior team member Sydney Barrows, and others such as Bailey Key, Emma Malabuyo, Peyton Ernst, and Kennedy Baker. With their impressive list of elite girls, conjointly comes an alarming rate of perpetual injuries, so much so that the gym world has coined Texas dreams as Texas nightmares. The incompetence in managing, training, and pacing has resulted in Reagan Smith having her last elite years marred by injuries and headed off to college. She has a lot to prove. She has been battling with injuries. She got injured there, hurt her right ankle, and it is still a problem, heavily taped at this point in time, and she's got to find a way to deal with that. It has been a pain and problem for her every day since Montreal. It was his Bailey Key had an impressive junior career, and in 2015, her first senior year, she was a promising athlete for the 2016 Olympics. Yet by the short time 2016 arrived, she was sidelined all the year with injuries, not even competing one single event. By the Olympic season, she had to retire her elite career due to a never-ending back injury, forfeiting her Olympic dreams. It didn't get any better for her at college. Although, having previously committed to the University of Florida, she ended up signing with the University of Alabama, more than likely from injuries and deteriorating performance. She competed one, one routine in her entire collegiate career and then had to medically retire. But what I love is her finesse and her toe point and the execution. Oh, completely off. Peyton Ernst was also placed on medical leave less than a year at the University of Florida. The university ended up releasing her after giving her the option to medically retire or transfer. She then transferred, trying to make a comeback at University of Alabama, but later had to retire due to her unceasing injuries. Emma Malabuyo broke her tibia in 2019 after finishing 2018 off of the national team due to not being able to compete at championships because of injury. Let's hope she's able to have a decent college career at UCLA. Abby Walker started with being committed to Georgia, a top 10 collegiate gymnastics program, and later had to accept an offer from Penn State, currently ranked 25th. Although it has never been stated why this happened, many speculate it's likely due to her deteriorating performance and her injuries. Ashton Kim claims they were overtrained to the point of injury, hers being everything from dislocated joints to stress fractures to a torn labrum and plenty of surgeries in between. Kennedy Baker alleged that Kim would ignore their pain or protest not to do certain skills, and when they were inevitably injured, she would blame them or make them feel guilty. She's broken eight fingers, eight toes, she's ruptured her Achilles, with Kim making her crawl to get ice. She's needed two surgeries because of that. She's had a meniscus tear that also needed surgery, and she's had three back stress fractures, two fractures in each ankle, multiple sprains, a torn calf, and a concussion. And yes, some of these are unavoidable in competitive gymnastics. For the most part, injuries come with competitive careers. But as Kennedy alleged, some of these could have been prevented if Kim listened to her and took her pain seriously. For example, with her Achilles tear, Kennedy Baker has stated that prior to injuring herself, she had already told Kim that her heels were hurting. And Kim asked her to tumble anyway. With this injury notoriety, let's hope Sydney Barros will come out the exception to the rule. So the question from this is, what is the proper recourse for a coach's negligence and or incompetence in the aspect of injuries? Um, let me know what you think about that. In my opinion, for incompetence, just like with any job, it should automatically mean supervision and more training in whatever area you are faltering in. 
Repeated incompetence or negligence calls for you to either be placed on suspension, be supervised, or removed. Again, just like with any job. And I understand that when you are doing high-level coaching, injuries happen, serious injuries happen. These coaches aren't doctors or medical professionals. I get it. On the same coin, we always hear of coaches ignoring doctors' orders, ignoring their pain. Yes, sometimes kids embellish or want to relax for a day, but the high rate of injury at Texas Dreams presents that this is clearly not the case. This is happening because of overtraining and conditioning, and the organization is allowing it. For me personally, USAG bears the responsibility for having incompetent members and gyms within the organization. It takes almost nothing to be a coach. You pay an annual coach's membership fee, you pay for a background check, you pay and watch a few hours of videos that they call courses, you pass some jokes they call tests, and bam, you're a professional member of USAG. With that, it's easy to see why we have so many incompetent coaches in the first place. However, Kim is an elite coach who has coached at national trainings and camps for over 15 years, so you'd think she'd be held to a higher and more professional standard. In addition, the rate and severity of injuries taking place at Texas Dreams constitutes at least some kind of intervention. We have to keep in mind, many of these girls will have problems from their injuries for the rest of their lives. There needs to be caution taken to ensure their quality of life after their athletic careers have ended. So one must wonder why USAG doesn't have a department of vetting or reviewing for their gyms and coaches. A department that will flag gyms with an unusually high rate of injury, supervise, investigate, and create a plan of action for the gyms and coaches in question. Texas Dreams has essentially been given free reign from the organization to be incompetent and injure these girls into medical retirement, and it's not right. In a perfect world, this wouldn't have gone on this long. So let us know what you think about this and what you think is the right course of action for injury incompetence and or negligence. She may not necessarily need to be banned for this, but Kim and her husband Chris should face just as much if not harsher suspensions than Maggie for their behavior that we'll discuss in the next video. Next, we will cover the allegations of physical battery, racism, a culture of fear, and emotional abuse at Texas Dreams. I must state The next segment, especially the allegations of racism, are extremely disturbing. Even to make a video on it and have to read, especially what Kennedy Baker had went through, I'm I'm appalled. So I'd just like to warn you of that. All right, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned. Until next time.